Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis. It is October 14th. Xur has arrived. He is up here in Watcher's Grave on Nessus. Let's see what he's got. All right, so the first thing we've got is the hard light auto rifle. Um, if you don't own it, buy it. It's kind of just a rare, unique one. You can switch between arc, solar, and void just with like kind of a hold of the reload button. It's also got uh, ricochet. Ricochets will actually do more damage, but basically next to no fall off. So the range is fantastic. And then once you get the catalyst, it's just very stable as well. Again, it's just an auto rifle that fits a lot of roles, depending on if you need arc, solar, void, need some range. It's an exotic. If champions ever ask for... Uh, auto rifles this is a good way to take care of that so if you don't own it buy it make sure you own a copy of this thing for the hunters we've got liar's handshake using your arc melee ability at or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counter punch that will heal you um cross counter paired with you know your melees on arc is a really cool way to actually help yourself stay alive and it's a pretty powerful punch this is based on a 23 strength stat roll with a total of 62 14 mobility, resilience of 8, kind of set up to be a PvE role here. So even though it is a total of 62, you're not really wasting anything on intellect on something that's based around melees. So Hunters, while it's not like a 67, it's about as good of a 62 as you could ask for. So buy it if your stats are not in the best places. Titans, you got Lion Rampants and you got a total of 65. Basically, this is the boots that let you jump better. Float longer, jump higher, that type of thing. So if you don't own them, you should always own a pair of these at some point. And a 65 star roll, not too shabby. For the Warlocks, you've got Crown of Tempest. Now, it's not like the 70 that he sold a little while back, and it is lacking in resilience, unfortunately. But you've got a spike in recovery, spike in intellect, and a spike in strength, um, and a 62 total. While I would like to see the mobility in resilience, it's still got a pretty solid spike in recovery, and it's a 62. So if you don't own Crown of Tempest for Arc 3.0's sake, make sure you do. For the Hawk Moon, you've got an opening shot, combat grip, which is going to help you greatly control recoil, paired with handling and stability on fluted barrel. It may not be quite the 5 out of 5 last week, but it's still going to be a very solid Hawk Moon because opening shot is just a solid choice. So if you don't have Hawk Moon, this is a solid one to pick up in case you've missed it and haven't got a good one yet. And then when you talk about Dead Man's Tail, you've got Vorpal. This is also one that people are going to be looking for. You've got stability and range from ricochet rounds. You've got fitted stock for stability, a little bit of recoil, a little less handling. And then you've also got full bore for range, less stability and handling. So these are kind of trading a little bit, but Vorpal is definitely one to look after. So if you want one of these for PvP, definitely to help take care of some, you know, enemy guardian supers and stuff, this is actually a pretty solid choice. I'm not sure about fitted stock and full bore being optimal because you're getting stability here and you're getting range here, but giving up stability and handling and then slightly decreasing handling. So this will be a lower handling one, but range should be high with Vorpal and Ricochet rounds. As for the legendary weapons, honestly, I don't know if I can recommend any of these. You've got Genesis and Disruption Break on a hand cannon, auto loading holster and Disruption Break on a submachine gun. Subsistence and Demolitionist is probably okay, but again, Subsistence on a submachine gun typically generally not worth it because it's just hard to keep Subsistence running as opposed to something like an auto rifle when you have like 50 bullets and they hit harder. Iota, Iota Draconis is that 900, you know, 956 charge time fusion rifle. Surplus and Frenzy isn't bad. Probably a decent combo, but I still don't love that fusion. Full Auto is about to be just something that's going to be in actual like settings. Paired with Thresh, not really anything that I would be too excited about. You know, Assault Mag and Rifled Barrels, not bad. A little bit of handling. Just a full auto I don't think is really helping this thing very much. Zen Moment and Disruption Break, unfortunately. It's just Disruption Break weak altogether. Not really going to do too much. Again, if you break a shield with a machine gun, you're probably going to want to keep shooting and not switch off of it. And then you've got Stars and Shadow with Underdog, which not really my thing. You do have Snapshot Sights and Quick Draw. Paired with like flared magwell, maybe a little handling and stability. Like those are going to make it snappy, but that's about it. So while the legendary weapons are lackluster, the exotics are actually pretty good this week. Things you should probably own, a couple decent rolls on the two weapons. Hard light you should definitely own. The armor for the titan though, you've got a 57. You've got a 61 that's fine. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. A 54, which shouldn't even be in Xur's inventory. And then a 61 with two recovery and honestly just mobility that's higher than I would like. If the, if the mobility was in recovery, it'd be better, but it's still... Just 61s are not like, must run to Xur and buy this piece of armor. They're just, they're fine. They're any 60 roll is probably going to beat those. Distribution's not amazing either. Warlocks, not really off to a great start with a 57, a 58, 59, 
and a 62 with high mobility and high strength. Warlock, sorry, not your week. Hunters are not much better. You got a 61 with decent mobility and strength. That's not a horrible roll, but then you got a 59, 58. You do have a decent 63, though. High intellect, if you're looking for that to kind of be your high stat on the bottom three. High mobility, high resilience, a little bit of a PvE build. So not a bad 63, but again, nothing like, hey, here's a 67 stat roll. Not, not likely to see that one. Um, but outside of that, trials should be pretty normal this weekend. I haven't checked the weapon, but I know we've already seen the bow and the shotgun, so it's just going to be an older weapon. Pretty solid exotics across the board here, though. If you don't own them, buy them. If you, especially if you don't own, like, Crown of Tempest, even though it's a 62, um, it's not the best, but it still helps a lot with Arc 3.0. Decent roll here, one everybody should own, and that's mostly it. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like below, leave a comment if I didn't shout out something that should have been, maybe something of legendary weapons was something you guys were excited about. If you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, I'm going to be streaming a couple different games. I'd like to stream Scorn and also a Plague Tale, looking to play both of those, so find me over on Twitch. Right here on YouTube, though, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. See you in the next one.